Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari A to Z, a series of short playthroughs of Atari 8-bit games, some of which I grew up with and some which are new to me. Today is one of the latter. Today we're taking a look at Upward, which was a 1988 release published in Analog Magazine issue 59 and developed by Greg Klaus. Or Greg Knaus, not sure how to pronounce that. Uh, Knaus describes himself as politically liberal, physically not too hot, scholastically fairly bored, psychologically very confused, cosmically insignificant, and emotionally quite happy, thank you. On a whim, he has been known to program an entire game just to write a new biography. Upward was one of numerous games published in Analog Magazine that was written in the programming language Action, which was quite popular, particularly in America, for producing high-speed games without needing to use machine language. So it was quite popular to program directly in assembly language for a lot of games and things that people wanted to run at a good speed. But Action provided a good alternative for those who wanted a bit more of a structured programming language that was a little bit easier to pass than assembly language. So it became quite popular, particularly in analog and antique magazines. So let's go check it out. Let's go take a look at Upward. Okay, here we are with Upward from 1985 by Greg Knaus, or Knaus, or however you pronounce it. Uh, apologies if you do happen to stumble across this video and I've said it incorrectly. Anyway, yes, this was a game that was published in Analog Magazine as a type-in listing, uh, but it was written in Action. Actually, it was written in a sort of weird combination of Action and Basic. So there was an Action listing that you needed to type in and save to disk. Then there was a basic listing you needed to type in with some machine code routines, which you then needed to save to disk and run, and that created a, like an executable file on the disk, if I remember rightly. And then there was a third action listing, I think, something like that. And the, the reason for that was the relatively limited amount of memory that the Atari computers had. Like, the whole thing couldn't fit in memory at once. So um, it had to be split into these parts and then sort of combined together by the different programs um, to create the complete game. But yes, the result was this, and I haven't tried this at all, so I don't really know what to ex expect from it, aside from the fact that you are a dude who is down a big hole and you need to try and get out. So, let's play. Right, here we are, right at the bottom. We are chappy here, we can run left and right. We can jump, <coughs> excuse me, by pressing the fire button. I would assume we need to jump over that purple stuff and climb these ropes. avoid the bats and also get out before our strength and or air runs out so our air is continually declining and taking damage taking damage reduces our strength we jump off a rope we can jump off a rope that's a relatively unusual thing for a platform game this era so we hop over here and then onto that tiny platform there Actually, very tight controls in this. Actually, this is this is good. This is good stuff. Especially when you compare to sort of similar commercial stuff, things like the notorious Spelunky and so on. And it looks like you don't die if you fall too far, which is nice. That's one of the things I hate the most about old platform games because it just makes it so difficult to get around and it means that every mistake you make is potentially fatal Where, where's the oh we have to keep going up that's why can we go up through there yeah, oh no not head in the lava or whatever that is I guess we have to no okay this is going to be tricky and jump and jump Jump. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, game over. Jesus. Okay, so it, it is instant death if you land in the uh, in the purple stuff. Excuse my guzzling of Red Bull. It's uh, very hot, and I'm very thirsty. I score 50. Let's see if we can do a bit better. We still have quite a way to go, actually. Alright, hop. Well, I say I'm pretty impressed with this so far. So, it's very smooth animation and movement. Very tight, responsive controls. Oops. Ooh. 
Whoops. And a simple but effective structure. I mean, essentially, all we've got here is a platform level and a single enemy. But that's enough to produce a sense of challenge. Whoops. Okay, we got those missile things as well. That's enough to provide a sense of challenge and interest. I mean, to be honest, I probably would have been happy with just the platforming, but... It is what it is. Alright, let's see if we can do this right this time. So, leap! Oh no! Oh no, that was good. Ah, so that one up there was a red herring. Climb up here. Oh, this looks awkward. Oh no! Oh, <laughs> uh, that's rude. Alright, try again. Got 70 points that time, eh? A whopping great high score. Let's go again. I like this. This is good. If I typed this in, I would have been very happy, I think. Except for the fact that I didn't have a copy of Action and as such wouldn't have been able to type this in at the time, but, well... You know what I mean. Action is one of those things that I was, I was very much aware of at the time, but I didn't explore for myself. I remember, um... While my dad, my father, and my brother were involved with writing for Page Six magazine, as I've mentioned numerous times on this series, um, we would pick up a lot of discs from the Page Six public domain library, which tended to consist of stuff that came from, um, like, user group newsletters, as well as magazines like Antic and Analog and so on. Um, and a lot of those were written in action. And action was one of those languages that people sort of seemed to take great pride in using. So, like, when you would play a game that was written in action, you could generally guarantee that on the title screen someone would probably say, This is written in action. Go away, bat. Oh, no! Ooh. Getting closer. Getting a little bit further each time. All right. Bring it out. But yeah, honestly, this is actually better than some commercial platform games that were released for the Atari 8 bit. Not necessarily in terms of presentation, because the presentation is very simple. But effective and clear. But I, I have played platform games that don't play as well as this. And that aren't as responsive as this. And that didn't have as many interesting environmental features as this. So. Yeah, very impressed. there's a lot of variety what to what you're doing too so like on some screens you're jumping across platforms on some you're sort of solving traversal puzzles that jumping between the ropes bit remind oh no we've done it again yeah that jumping between ropes bit reminds me very much of uh, jungle hunt it might have been nice to have more than one life but at the same time, I sort of get... At the same time, I sort of get why you don't have that facility. Because it's to, to keep things challenging. And it also may be... It may be that there's only this one level. I don't know. I, I haven't beaten it, as you can see, so... It may be that there's only this single level, and as such... As such, the game was designed to... 
be as challenging as possible within that one level. But, well, I'd say we shall see, but I can't guarantee that, I'm afraid. Alright, come on, bring it. Up, 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 up. Down. Leap. Carefully leap. Carefully. Ooh. Carefully leap. Carefully. No! Oh, that was so close. That was so close. That was so close. So close. Upsetting. Very upsetting. Try again. Yeah, I just overcompensated on that last one and just fell off. That would have been fine if I hadn't pushed left. But I did. Oh dear. Right, come on, I can do this. Ow. Excuse the noisy cars outside. As I say, it's very hot today, so I've got the window open and the fan blasting, so... Apologies if you can hear any of that. But it's that, or I melt. And I don't really want to melt, so... here we can cope with a bit of outside noise and fan noise Ooh oh 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 he's done it he's only gone and done it oh this looks nightmarish and of course we can't reach that one no nope. get out of here bat oh that was scary right uh, can I safely fall off this one? No, I cannot. I should have jumped. <sighs> well, lesson learned. Eighty points that time. All right, bring it. I got it this time. I was about to make a joke, a predictable, boring, and not very funny joke about this being the Dark Souls of platformers, but in fact, one thing I think that is worth pointing out that I, I think I've probably talked about before, but I'm going to talk about it again anyway, is the difficulty in stuff like Dark Souls, Demon Souls, Bloodborne, and that sort of thing is very much this kind of old school difficulty, in that you can't expect to clear something first time and the way that you do end up clearing something is by practicing and by learning and through trial and error and learning the best and worst way to do things learning what your character's capabilities are that sort of game design stretches right back to this era so when someone someone jokes about something being like dark souls you know a lot of games were like Dark Souls long before... Oh no! <laughs> long before Dark Souls was ever a thing. And that that doesn't mean like Dark Souls' distinctive style of sort of weighty stamina-based combat. That, that was... That's very much... Although even that's not unique to Dark Souls. <laughs> but certainly the, the idea of seemingly intense often frustrating punishing unforgiving difficulty 
that most people associate with Dark Souls actually originates all the way back in the 8-bit era with games like this. Where you're given a reasonably lengthy sequence of things to do. And your only hope for success is repeated practice. And in some respects, I'm, I'm quite surprised that Dark Souls and its ilk are as popular as they are, because that kind of old-school game design... Oh, God, done it again. That sort of old-school game design was falling out of favour probably... Probably towards the late 32-bit era, maybe, I guess. It's like 16-bit games definitely very much still had this this sense of difficulty because you, you, you got stuff like Super Ghouls and Ghosts and that kind of thing from the Japanese tradition and then you had things like Prince of Persia and stuff from the Western tradition um, and they all required you to sort of learn what, what you were doing, learn what the hazards in the levels were use trial and error and all that kind of thing. In the 32-bit era on PlayStation, we still had some games that were designed like that. We still had some arcade-style games, particularly in the early days of the platform. Uh-oh. But towards the end, we started to get more and more games that weren't designed to be finished in a single sitting where you would save your progress and if you failed at something you'd reload a save rather than going right back to the beginning and doing the whole thing again. That said, even in games like that, there's an element of learning and trial and error and that sort of thing. If you look at something like, say, Metal Gear Solid, so you, you save your game at various checkpoints in that. Um, but if you fail, you'll have to do the same sequence again and again and again until you find the right way of doing it. Now, something like Metal Gear Solid, there's generally several different solutions to a problem. Which is, is one way that it sort of sets itself apart from earlier things. But then you look at something like... Um, something like Castlevania Symphony of the Night. That's still very much old school in design, despite its... It being an iconic 32-bit game. So you, you could save your game, yes. Oh god, what do I do now? What do I actually do now? Do I jump over here? Oh no, no! Oh, Jesus. <sighs> Alright, let's have one more try. Because I'm not convinced I can get past that section. One more try. We've been at this for nearly 20 minutes already. We're not actually that far off the top, though. Oh, don't say that. Don't say that. I'll make myself want to keep trying until I do it, but... Oh, I don't know. Oh, no! Oh. I also think I'm losing concentration as well. It's just the other reason I might I might call it a day here, but Oh no. Alright, come on. Come on, you're better than this. Boop 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 boop. Easy. Easy peasy. You can do this first bit, no problem. Absolutely no problem whatsoever. Now, this bit's slightly trickier. But doable. No! Oh. 
Maybe, maybe just, maybe just one more. Maybe just one more. Maybe just one more. Watch this, I say. Alright, watch these pro skills. Leap! Leap! Climb! Leap over the bat! Hop onto there, climb up here. Jumpy, 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 beautifully handled. Jump and avoid the arrow. Jump and avoid the arrow, lovely stuff. Yeah, whoops. Just, just forget that part happened. Just forget that part happened. As you see, everything else is going perfectly smoothly. Perfectly smoothly. Straight up there. Jumpy, jumpy, huge leap. Huge leap. Huge leap. Smaller leap. Climb, 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 climb. Down. Jump. Careful jump. Careful jump. Careful jump. Careful jump. Leap. Climb. See? It's all fine when you concentrate and narrate everything you're doing. Right. This bit's more troublesome. Leap! Ooh. Uh. Hmm. This might not be optimal. Um. Well, I can try. Leap! Nope. I feel like I could have made that. I feel like I could have made that. I feel like I could have made that. <laughs> Last one. Promise. I don't promise. But I am provisionally saying that this is the last one. Yeah, I'm really impressed with this game. It plays so well. Like, I, I know a lot of typing listings were really high quality, but... Analogues in particular tended to be something quite special. So I, I don't know if it's that they had rigorous sort of quality standards for them, or if they just happened to have some particularly talented contributors. Because I know that Analog had some very regular contributors, for example. There's probably the most famous being, I think it was Kyle Peacock and Tom Hudson, were some of the most prolific contributors of type in listings. <sighs> Unacceptable. Unacceptable final attempt. Right, come on. Greg Klaus, I feel like I've heard his name before as well, but I can't for the life of me remember offhand what, and I forgot to look him up on Atari Mania, so... Um. Whoops. I'm sure some resourceful person in the comments will do that if they're that curious. Ugh. Oh, that was rubbish. That's the easy bit as well. If I mess up the easy bit, that must mean I'll get the hard bit perfect. Because that's how it works, right? Oh. 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 Good. 
tricky bit number one. Okay, tricky bit number one cleared. Impossible bit number one coming right up. Alright, so I guess what we need to do is sort of leap off it. Except you can't go through that stalactite. Oh, that's it. Oh, oh. Oh, this is scary. Oh no! Oh, I was so close. I was so close. I was... I was... so close. Yeah, it's the last screen after that. Come on, we can do this. I got this. a lot of strength lost. Get out of here, bat. We don't like your kind around here. Ow! That's what I get for being bat racist. Alright, come on. We nailed this bit now. This bit's easy. Easy. I'm calling it there. I'm calling it there, otherwise we're going to be here all day. I'm sorry to blue ball you all like that, but you know, you can always try this game for yourself. Uh, with it being public domain and all, you can even play it without guilt. Not that I'm sure many people playing Atari 8-bit games these days play them with much guilt anyway. But uh, anyway, yes, that was Upward from Analog Magazine, developed by Craig, Greg Knaus. Greg Naus. Very enjoyable game. Very impressed with that. Uh, very, very good indeed. And like I say, a very good example of uh, the general standard of typing listings in Analog Magazine. I know sort of the fact it's written in action kind of sets it apart anyway. But the fact that, that Analog did listings in action anyway sort of said that they were sort of holding things to a fairly high standard anyway. So... They kind of expected that if people were serious about programming their Atari, or even just typing in stuff from magazines, then they sh they should get a hold of programming languages that produced good results. And Action was certainly a programming language that produced good results. So, anyway, we leave that there for today. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. <laughs>